Hello, everyone. Welcome to the um, the Dido webinar for exploring the launch of Google Voice. Um, you should hopefully be able to see my screen and also have access to chat. So if you do have any questions, any comments, please uh, let me know. Um, and I'll be happy to help address those as we uh, move through here. Uh, my name is Evan, and I'm the G Suite Program Manager and Team Lead here at Dido for Cloud Solutions and G Suite Professional Services. So I'll be the kind of the pilot today. Uh, I do see some familiar faces out there uh, as well as some new ones. So thanks everyone for uh, for joining on here as we do uh, our monthly webinar for G Suite and our main topic this week, uh, exploring the launch of Google Voice. So very briefly, for those who aren't familiar with Dido, we're a full stack uh, Google Cloud Premier partner. Uh, Premier is the kind of the highest status of partner that Google, uh, excuse me, that Google offers. We've been in the ecosystem for around 10 years, uh, and we help our customers with data migration, training, change management, um, and a variety of other services around infrastructure, data, uh, and, uh, and maps and location services. Uh, today, we're going to be super laser focused on G Suite. Um, but just as FYI, uh, we are experts in the Google Cloud Platform, Google Maps Platform, uh, Chrome devices, Jamboards, and providing professional services around all of those things for training, uh, change management, and technical work as well. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely let us know uh, what we can do to help if you are thinking about deploying any of these technologies, or we can even help to figure out what that is. Uh, toward the end of our uh, our presentation today, I will uh, include a slide of um, of how to contact us. Um, but for the time being, uh, let's go ahead and jump uh, straight into the agenda. So uh, I'm going to start off with a quick highlight of the most recent updates in G Suite and just talk a little bit about what's new. Last month was Google's, um, uh, we're recording in, in May 2019, and last month was Google's annual uh, Cloud Next event. There were about 120-ish G Suite features that were either announced or fully rolled out uh, along with that event. Um, about uh, 40 of those are considered um, substantial or major and not iterative or small features. So there's a ton of content that I won't be able to cover today, and I'll show uh, exactly where you can go to get additional details there uh, and then highlight some of the major ones. The main topic for today is going to be exploring the launch of Google Voice, talking about what Google Voice is, and then critically, and for a new product, uh, I think this is the, the distinction that we want to help our customers uh, draw is what Google Voice isn't uh, yet. And then uh, I'll be going into a little bit of a use case of the month. This is kind of just a productivity hack for G Suite users, um, one that rolled out a couple months ago, uh, the right-click context menu uh, in Gmail. So I'll be able to show exactly how um, I personally leverage that. And my customers have been giving uh, really great feedback that they have started doing the same thing. Uh, so since it's catching on like wildfire, I thought it would make sense to share that uh, as our use case this month. Um, we have some time for Q&A kind of allotted toward the end, but um, I am going to be monitoring the questions and I have my team uh, chatting me in the background to monitor questions as well. So if you do have any questions, comments, concerns um, uh, while we're moving through this, please don't wait till the end. Um, but at the end, we will have a specific time to uh, kind of address some of the common concerns that customers have been bringing up to us um, and, uh, and how we might address those with regards to G Suite and Google Voice. Perfect. So starting off here, um, again, there are 43 um, product, uh, what we would call updates. So again, not iterative changes, but actually new tools, features, rollouts that were announced in April. Today, I'm just going to touch on, uh, on 12, and I'm actually only going to go into detail on four. Um, so uh, if you do want to get the full picture, you can find the recap for April updates at gsuiteupdates.googleblog.com uh, or just by searching for the G Suite um, uh, updates blog. Uh, really recommend that resource and signing up for the emails there uh, so that you can get notified on those updates as well. 
the first one that I wanted to touch on um, is related to the last webinar that we did um, last month around team drives. Um, there were actually a couple of updates for team drives. Uh, the first one uh, that I'm personally very excited about because we've been using team drives for a long time is the ability to hide inactive and irrelevant team drives. Uh, this means that when for some of the projects that we did that only lasted a quarter or uh, some of the teams that I was previously a part of um, that are kind of currently cluttering my team drives uh, layout, I can actually go ahead and hide those. And I can always find them and pull them back later, but being able to hide those inactive and irrelevant team drives is a nice little organizational booster for me. And then uh, the ability to actually search for files located in team drives by creator. You could already search for files located in team drives this is specifically calling out that since a team drive is um, uh, since a team drive is actually system owned um, it wouldn't show the creator previously but google has actually updated this so that the the actual user who created a document will still show up as a creator even though they're not the owner of that document so a nice little uh, change there i do also want to mention that the um the team drives functionality or or the team drives feature is going to be rebranded toward the end of this month to be called shared drives um i'm not going to go into too much detail there but it more accurately reflects what people are actually using team drives for which is kind of like a cloud version of like a network shared drive or something along those uh those lines um, jumping ahead, uh, this is very much in line with accessibility. Uh, live captions are now available in Google Hangouts Meet. That means that for users that may be deaf or hard of hearing, um, they can actually leverage uh, Google's speech to text API natively integrated with uh, Hangouts Meet. By the way, we have helped some of our customers leverage that API in their individual products, and it's, it is something that can be leveraged by businesses, but um, this native integration with Hangouts Meet is really excellent. It actually ties into our main topic, uh, Google Voice, a little bit as well, because uh, when those captions are being generated, they're actually attributed to the user that is speaking. Uh, and if that user is uh, dialed in by phone, it will show their phone number. Um, but if they're using Google Voice, their phone number is tied to their G Suite account. So uh, it will actually show their profile picture. So for those users that are deaf or hard of hearing that do uh, benefit from um, the live captions as a, an accessibility tool, uh, that means that they don't have to figure out who exactly is dialing in from each number. Um, they actually can see exactly who is speaking at any given moment. I'm really excited about that one. Uh, another one that actually rolled out pretty organically, and I actually, uh, I noticed that this was working for me before I even um, read the update blog. Um, you can now do faster scheduling in Google Calendar with multiple participants. So there's a new section on the left-hand panel called Meet With, where you can enter multiple team members' names in to pull up their calendar overlay, uh, kind of compared to yours, and you can book a meeting. And when you book that meeting, it will automatically name the event, add all of those uh, meet with participants, uh, and include a video conference link by default. So nice little productivity booster there. Um, this is an area where Google is using uh, intelligent and efficient features to save time in booking meetings. Um, Google does a lot of industry research into what people are kind of uh, spending time on that might be considered toil or not uh, necessarily high value activities. And I think uh, scheduling meetings is one that takes all of us a lot longer um, than we wish it did. Um, and this, uh, this definitely goes a long way to uh, accelerating that process. Um, Another tool that uh, rolled out last month, and this one is great for users that are either more familiar with a Microsoft way of doing things, or just maybe not so familiar with um, G Suite, or even if they are familiar and they wanna get additional training and updates, you can now quickly find support resources uh, directly in your G Suite application windows. Um, so um, it's actually really easy in Gmail. There's a question mark at the top of the screen to click on. Um, um, in um, in Drive, uh, the Docs editors, um, 
the this is actually under a help menu but um, instead of just going to the help center there are now recommendations for training resources and quickly obtaining updates on the products that you're currently viewing so this is all in app you don't have to go to a new tab or window or watch uh, you know a video on YouTube you can actually get this directly in your window uh, when you're leveraging these tools so Again, especially if you're uh, new to G Suite or you're uh, onboarding uh, employees that are not familiar with operating in a G Suite environment, this is a phenomenal tool to help them get started. All right. Um, and then the last uh, thing that I wanted to mention, and this is more for those G Suite admins out there, um, Google announced eight new beta programs at their event last month. Um, I'm going to go through them very briefly and not spend a ton of time on uh, any individual one. But if you are interested in getting signed up, uh, either reach out to Dido and we can provide you with the link, or uh, you can find the beta signups for your G Suite environment on the G Suite Updates blog. Um, the first one is the ability to better manage threats and collaborate in the G Suite Security Center. This gives administrators the ability to save searches in uh, the uh, security investigation tool. So uh, when admins are investigating an incident, they can save their search and share it with another admin. Um, the second is increased email security with the security sandbox for Gmail. This gives you advanced security and uh, email scanning, um, specifically targeting ransomware and zero day threats. So new cyber attacks that haven't been previously identified in index um, in order for um, users to be able to operate more safely over email. Uh, the third is advanced phishing and malware protection for Gmail. This is an additional feature around how you handle your uh, phishing and malware um, inbound traffic so that you can have more advanced quarantining and threat detection and actually a little bit more oversight into those areas from the admin layer. Uh, for those Dropbox users out there, uh, there's now a Google Docs Sheets and Slides connector, so you can actually just leverage the uh, the Google editors while using Dropbox. So a nice little um, boost there. Um, the ability to dynamically control G Suite access is one that I've been uh, hearing requests for for quite a long time. Uh, and sometimes organizations spend uh, a, a pretty substantial amount to achieve this. What that means is the ability to limit who can access G Suite and from where. So if you have contractors who should only be able to access G Suite when they're on site, um, you can actually limit that based on IP address or device or time of day um, and restrict access at other times and places. The ability to work with billions of rows in BigQuery uh, with connected sheets is the functionality to do advanced data analytics uh, still with the, uh, the Google Sheets interface. So uh, BigQuery is, uh, is a big data analytics and data warehouse tool that Google provides that is, is quite phenomenal. Uh, it allows you to work with really big data sets and um, just requires SQL knowledge to be able to work with. Uh, but you can actually connect that with many spreadsheets and then be able to analyze and visualize data using a spreadsheet. So your data scientist can write your SQL query and your uh, regular office workers that are not necessarily uh, fluent in SQL um, can actually do their data analysis uh, and visualization using Google Sheets. There are some new alert management and collaboration feel, or features in the uh, G Suite Alert Center. This gives admins the ability to assign security alerts to a specific admin. So that admin can mark as not started, in progress, or complete when they're addressing security alerts within their domain. Uh, this is part of uh, Google's kind of proactive approach toward improving notifications in, um, in G Suite for administrators. Uh, and then one that I'm pretty excited about personally is the, uh, the set and structure metadata in Drive launching into beta. This allows admins to, or I'm sorry, this allows G Suite users to add metadata to their Drive files. So if there's some type of information that should be associated with a file that doesn't belong in the subject or the body of that email, or I'm sorry, of that document, uh, things like client names, project names, ID numbers, um, uh, contract IDs, things like that, um, so that you can actually search and sort by those things later are all um, 
uh, are all now available in beta and rolling out to general availability, hopefully um, for everyone else kind of later in the year. Um, whoops, it looks like I uh, clicked into the recap there on just one sec. All right. Um, Perfect. So jumping into the main topic for the week, um, we're talking about uh, Google Voice, which is now uh, a part of uh, G Suite. Uh, a really exciting announcement. The beta was announced last year um, during the, the 2018 Next event uh, back in, I think that was late July or possibly August. Um, and as of April 2019, Google Voice is now available to the general public. Um, so our goal today is to go through kind of what Google Voice is uh, as kind of a voice over IP offering that's really, really well positioned for G Suite users, and then address some of what Google Voice isn't. Um, and I do say yet because the offering is still in a rapid development cycle. Google is building on top of it uh, aggressively and quickly. So even though it is now generally available, um, some of the features um, uh, are amazing and completely differentiated from other um, uh, other phone offerings, but or other kind of cloud telephony offerings. But some of them may not be rolled out yet, and we want to help our customers to understand exactly what those are before excuse me, making this the decision to move forward. So just starting off with a little bit of context, Google Voice is actually not new. Uh, it's actually been around for over 10 years, since, uh, since 2009, uh, as a consumer service. And um, as a uh, kind of an end user level platform, it's uh, really, it's actually already been leveraged by businesses, just not in a supported format uh, and without any type of number porting or, or phone system behind it for administration. Um, so I do want to mention that Google has a, a very long and, um, uh, and experienced history in, um, in the telephony kind of space. Um, also, some of the integration, like being able to call from Gmail, um, has already been there from the consumer side. So some of these things have already been uh, tried and true and tested over the last decade. Uh, some of these features that we're going through are new today, but from like a call quality and infrastructure standpoint, Google has actually uh, already fully established all of that infrastructure in the background before beginning to roll the voice offering out. Um, so jumping ahead, um, the Google Voice kind of um, uh, application priorities are very similar to what you would see with G Suite. The goal is to have a phone solution that is, uh, that is simple, smart, and scalable. From a simplicity standpoint, it's really easy for admins to consolidate users, assign numbers, port numbers over, uh, even in bulk, and uh, the billing is super simple and super straightforward. This is a paid add-on to G Suite, so um, it's not included in the regular subscription and does require an additional fee. Um, end users also get their familiar interface. Uh, if they've used the consumer version of Google Voice, they're super familiar, but the material design also aligns with G Suite. So even if they haven't used Voice before, uh, it's very easy to get used to and familiarize yourself with. And I'll demo that in a little bit. Um, from an intelligence standpoint, Google AI powers the spam filtering and voicemail transcription. So the goal there is to really help users save time. It's not just blocking every phone number as spam, um, and it does actually transcribe all of the voicemails. So if you ever have to send a caller to voicemail um, while you're in a meeting, you can still see and maybe on your screen or in the side of the meeting, uh, kind of what the topic of that call was to know, okay, that was critically important and I do need to step out. Um, G Suite also integrate, or I'm sorry, Google Voice also integrates super well with the other G Suite applications like Meet and Calendar, uh, which I'll go into in a little bit more detail later. But that principle that the more of G Suite that you lever leverage, the more the benefits of G Suite compound in terms of providing operational efficiency uh, is really true with Google Voice as well. 
And then from a scalability standpoint, you can provision, uh, you can port up to 500 numbers at a time. Um, you can provision numbers globally and instantly without needing to deal with multiple providers. Uh, and actually when you're bringing on a new uh, employee and assigning them a new phone number, it doesn't even require a touch from IT. The end user can pick out their number and all of their phone settings will be pre-configured for them. This is really an opportunity for G Suite users to unify their communication so that they can do Google Voice um, within the G Suite platform where Hangouts Meet and Chat and email uh, and Jamboards already exist to unify all of those communication channels. And then from a uh, device standpoint, this is a voice over IP offering. So you're not limited or you're not tied to a desk phone. It doesn't only go to your smartphone. Um, you can add in the devices that should be uh, a part of that phone number. And then whether you prefer to use a headset uh, and a laptop or desktop or uh, take your phone from a handset or a smartphone, uh, it works with all of those different devices. And it's really simple to, uh, to kind of like forward or select which devices need to be used for a given moment. Uh, and by the way, users can configure all of their different devices. So admins don't need to uh, dedicate IT time um, to, to do those device setups. It's really simple and straightforward. Um, some of the intelligence and integration that's built in here is for things like being able to disconnect from work. You can set your working hours so that calls automatically go to voicemail when you're not um, uh, within your working day. Um, you can also set business hours for your main lines and things like that, but it is tightly integrated with calendar to be able to achieve that. And then the voicemail transcription that I talked about is really key for those who haven't used Google Voice in the past. This is a huge lifesaver, you know, when you miss a call, when you don't, aren't in a position where you can listen to a voicemail, um, that you can have that voicemail either in your voice app or sent to your email box uh, to address. Um, I've already talked a little bit about the spam calling, but this is Google's uh, AI powered spam detection. For anyone who's familiar with the Gmail spam filter, which really is best in class, it's trained based on all of the billions of users that um, uh, that use consumer Gmail. And the Google Voice spam filtering is very much in that same vein. Google uses AI to power it. So it's not just flagging every call that you get from a new number as spam. It actually uses some intelligence behind that and keys into signals that um, us as the end users may not even be aware of uh, to classify incoming calls. And then there is also some context built in about calls that you receive. So uh, for example, if a conference dials out to you, you can see, okay, I'm taking this call over Wi-Fi. Here's the name of this meeting that's dialing out to me. And it's actually a call from Hangouts Meet. Uh, and I can simply join in from my phone or, uh, or decline uh, all in one place. The management process is really similar to G Suite. This does leverage the G Suite admin console. So it's a single place to manage all of your voice numbers, locations, uh, auto attendance, porting, and desk phones. Um, again, from a simplicity standpoint, the migration is, uh, is really, really easy. Uh, porting has historically been a really painful process and um, compared to porting from other providers, um, Google Voice porting is uh, phenomenally simple. It lays out clearly and concisely the requirements for each region that you're porting numbers from. It requires a couple of pieces of information to be able to execute on that port. But when you actually submit the request to port, Google handles that for you so you can prevent interruption of your key business processes while you're migrating. Um, really, really, really fast um, and very successful in the deployments we've done so far. Um, the auto attendants give you the ability to guide callers. So today, the auto attendants give you the ability to play menu prompts, transfer callers, send to voicemail, um, or disconnect a caller. You can handle and use multiple numbers and give, uh, you know, option one, two, three to, to move forward in a call. This is one of those areas that I want to call out that today, Google Voice has the ability to set up an auto attendant and do call handling. 
Um, but it doesn't actually include the functionality for ring groups at this time. So from, a, um, from an organizational standpoint, uh, Google Voice works really, really well for an individual user and users that need to be routed to directly. But if you have a sales line that round robins to, uh, fairly to each of the sales reps, or if you have a support line that should ring multiple people's phones and whoever answers first is the one to take the call, um, those features aren't quite here yet. They are scheduled to come out later in the year. They are a really high priority for Google to roll out. Uh, but right now, these would be used more for main lines or direct dials than they would be for uh, necessarily like a call group. And then I mentioned earlier, but you have the ability to integrate business hours. You also have the ability to uh, to do text-to-speech, including multiple uh, languages. So uh, there is that capability to leverage uh, Google's really, really strong natural language processing to, uh, to execute in your phone system. Um, and the auto attendant makes it really, really easy to set up your call system so that people can navigate to the right location uh, just very easy, e easily and all through text-to-speech. From a handset standpoint, Google Voice supports poly devices of the OBI 250, 350, and 450 lines today. This is another area where Google has indicated that they're working really hard to support additional desk phones. But if you do have users that require the capability to do things like uh, to put a call on hold or transfer um, to, another, uh, to another user, um, you would probably need to leverage one of these handsets. So from a strategic standpoint, what we're recommending right now for customers that are heavily reliant on handsets, um, which more and more we're seeing that they're less critical to day-to-day -day operations, but uh, they are still a very real part of most businesses, um, then we would recommend either updating your firmware to meet the requirements of the supported devices if you do have a polyphone, or uh, leveraging um, a new purchase acquisition for devices or even holding off on Google Voice uh, until your device refresh comes along. So for those additional tools and that ability to use handsets, this is currently what's supported uh, and that will, be, um, that will be updated in the near term by Google. Um, I do want to include uh, a couple of the beta testers kind of comments. I'm not going to read through them uh, so much as just leave them up on the screen uh, so that people can read through. But um, what I do want to share at this time is a couple of the other areas that Google has indicated um, rapid, uh, rapid um, uh, planned growth for the voice offering. Uh, the first one is APIs. Google ha is historically and, and actually as a philosophy is really focused on interoperability and Google Voice is no exception to that. However, the APIs are not yet available with the Google Voice offering. So if you have applications that need integrated calling, call tracking, things like that, um, those can't be, uh, or, or even, even like phone porting and administration, Currently, those APIs are not available, and they should be coming out later this year. Um, another area that um, the Google Voice offering is still expanding in is the supported locations. So, uh, for example, um, there the current regions for Google Voice are primarily uh, North America and Europe. Uh, but Google is taking as a high priority rolling out to additional regions over time to ensure that voice is a truly global offering uh, as it develops and evolves. Um, so uh, that being said, that's, uh, that's going to do it for the kind of overview of the product. I am going to go ahead and jump in to do a quick demo. Just a quick reminder to the audience, if you do have any questions, anything that I haven't touched on that would be useful to you, uh, definitely let me know, and, uh, and I will be happy to demo that for you. Um, but with that, I am going to uh, jump ahead to the live demo. And then we'll get into the the, uh, the pricing um, and billing structure a little bit um, right after that. So from an administrative standpoint, the Google Voice offering fits into uh, the G Suite admin console. So um, Google Voice appears as an additional kind of tool in my admin console when I navigate to my apps. 
the administration is really, really simple. Um, I really only have one kind of general setting that I need to determine, and that's whether or not end users should be able to choose their own phone number when we set them up for a new account. This wouldn't matter for users that we were porting in their existing phone number, but if we're creating a new one, um, we can give our users the ability to provision their own, and that saves IT time on needing to uh, manage and assign licenses, purchase, acquire, you know, assign out of a block of numbers, that kind of thing. Um, one note here is that even though the user is choosing their phone number, they don't own that phone number, the organization does. So when that user leaves the organization, uh, the admin team can then um, build into the offboarding processes, reassigning that number to another user, uh, maybe their manager, or even creating an auto attendant with that number that provides a little bit of information um, uh, regarding the um, uh, regarding the uh, user's departure or who their replacement might be or who their manager is, um, whatever action the caller needs to take to get into touch. Um, jumping back out to the um, uh, to the voice um, dashboard, the actual administration of Google Voice is a little bit more, uh, or I'm sorry, the actual service management gives a, a lot more in terms of capabilities. Uh, the ability to generate a user's list for voice and assign those phone numbers out, uh, even conducting batch assignments, sending invites to users so that they get an email notification asking them to go choose their number, uh, configuring emergency addresses and home offices, uh, all really, really easy to do from the, uh, the voice console. Uh, from a number management standpoint, uh, you can configure or add numbers for individual users or main lines, um, or you can unassign those and provide them to auto attendants. Unlimited locations are available in the voice offering. So if you have, um, uh, if you are a domestic organization that is primarily uh, located all within one or, or within one um, country, um, you can have unlimited do domestic locations on the standard Google Voice plan. Um, if you are an international organization, we pretty highly recommend the uh, premium voice plan, which does allow you to have unlimited locations uh, internationally. The auto attendance functionality um, is really, really easy to set up and configure. It gives you the ability to set a welcome message and a special announcement, um, to assign a number, configure business hours, and then you can actually use multiple languages and text-to-speech prompts to navigate your users to the correct uh, reci or recipient, so the, the correct phone number. One distinction and clarification that I really want to draw here is that Google Voice actually does not deal in extensions today. Um, this isn't actually even something that's on the, uh, the roadmap for the tool as far as uh, Google has made us aware. Um, basically, the, um, the intention here is that extensions are maybe a, a legacy of a, of a bygone era where having a main line and then navigating to the correct person by extension was maybe more effective than identifying who that user is by name and then automatically routing to them. Uh, or being able to just direct dial to that user without relying on an extension um, uh, and a phone number or I'm sorry, uh, from that main line and a phone system. Uh, one of the keys there is that uh, with the subscription to Google Voice, you do get uh, the phone number for all of your users. So um, there's, there's not like a cost saving measure to using an extension instead of a, a direct phone number. Um, the, the philosophy is just a little bit different there. Uh, most users do benefit from having a direct dial number. Um, and, uh, and that is kind of the approach that Google Voice has taken here. Um, from a setting standpoint, the, um, I mentioned a couple of times the porting process a little bit. Um, the porting here is uh, able to be completed via um, a CSV upload um, or via 
uh, an individual um, phone number request. And again, when you port numbers, Google actually prompts you with the exact information, details, numbers uh, that you need to port numbers in that country of service. Um, it, this has been working highly effectively for our customers so far uh, compared with the historic complexity of the porting process. Uh, it really, really is quite a, um, quite a painless process. All right, that's pretty much going to do it from the admin side. Feel free to drop in uh, any questions you have about the administration. Uh, I'll do a quick touch on the end user side and then jump into um, uh, kind of the billing structure and things like that. From the end user standpoint, the voice offering is really, really simple and straightforward. It provides a dashboard that allows you to dial out. Uh, it provides message history, voicemail history with transcripts. And then there's also spam and archival built in. From a setting standpoint, you can manage the different devices that are linked to your phone numbers. You can, um, you can set some key settings around messages and where they should go, whether it's uh, they should be stored in email or just in voice. Um, there's the capability to, um, to manage your call settings for outgoing calls, hiding your caller ID, managing inbound calls and which devices those should navigate to. There's also a feature called call screening, which users who have used a, um, uh, who in the past have used like a Pixel phone may be familiar with. Uh, that call screening is actually oriented around um, using uh, the Google Assistant to screen your phone call so that the caller is actually required to introduce themselves before uh, they can be connected with you. And then when you actually get that call, it will show you speech to text of how that person has introduced themselves before you have to make the decision of whether or not to answer the call. Really, really powerful for screening robocallers in particular uh, and saving time of people not having to deal with those. Uh, working hours can all be set through calendar. Voicemail settings can all be managed very easily. Uh, notifications, calling rates, uh, spam filtering are all uh, are all built in um, through the end user standpoint. So really, um, the actual calls themselves are managed from the end user standpoint, and then um, the um, the Google Voice offering uh, is administrated on a number by number basis. All right, that's going to do it for kind of going through the key features of, um, of the voice offering. So I'm going to go ahead and, and talk a little bit about pricing. Um, the uh, G Suite Enterprise is a subscription-based service. So it is billed in addition to G Suite. There are three tiers, and they're priced on a per seat per month basis. There's an additional cost for permanent calling rates per country. Uh, typically for domestic calling, there's not a calling rate depending on where you're located. That may not be the case, um, but the um, uh, but the pricing there is quite competitive. So uh, from a cost standpoint, uh, Google Voice is comparing very favorably to other providers in uh, cloud telephony. There is also the ability to do uh, to bring in numbers with calling plans and special numbers, you know, toll-free numbers, things like that. So uh, all of those capabilities are supported. From a pricing standpoint, there is um, a lower tier, which is for uh, a starter or for testing that allows up to 10 users and just has the basic functionality. There's a domestic tier, the standard plan, and there's an international tier, uh, the premium plan, and those cost $10, $20, and $30 uh, per user per month, respectively. Definitely uh, definitely reach out to Google or Dido uh, regarding that pricing if you are um, interested in signing up for, uh, for like bulk numbers or, um, or deploying your whole organization. <clears throat> and we can help out in, uh, in that regard. Uh, all right, that is pretty much going to do it for the um, for the G or the Google Voice offering. Um, again, uh, please let me know if there are any questions. The last couple of things that uh, I'll go through here today are the um, kind of the productivity tip of the month, uh, which is the right-click context menu that I mentioned uh, in our agenda, uh, and then a little bit in um, 
uh, how to reach out to Dido and what steps to take from here if you're interested in leveraging uh, Google Voice. So jumping ahead, um, the use case of the month here, right click context menu. It gives you the ability to actually right click an email or a group of emails if you have them all checked in Gmail um, in order to more quickly handle and triage your mailbox. So um, this may seem like um, just another way of going about the same activities. And in some regards it is, but it actually allows you to take bulk options like bulk replying um, as well as, and this is the workflow that I've really been benefiting from and I've, I've gotten really positive feedback from others who have tried it out. It actually gives you the ability to open your a group of emails in a new window. And what that does for me is it actually provides me with a set of action items that I can actually just close that window when I'm done. So if I select a group of emails that I know I need to respond to quickly um, and within whatever time I'm working with, um, I can open all of those in new windows, archive or snooze those mails so they're no longer cluttering my inbox, and then address those as individual windows. Now, if you operate out of multiple windows, not tabs, but specifically windows, uh, it may become too cluttered for this to work as an action items to-do list. Um, however, for those users that do work in, in kind of one main window with many tabs, um, this is a great workflow that can be a huge productivity saver. Um, all right, awesome. That's pretty much going to do it for uh, my use case of the month. Um, if you have any questions, if you're uh, looking into migrating, modernizing, modernizing and scaling your business through Google technology, even if you're just not sure what technology is being offered, uh, I would really recommend scheduling a consult with Dido just by heading over to didoweb.com slash consult. Uh, and especially for, uh, for those that are interested in trying out Google Voice, uh, definitely reach out and we'll be happy to, uh, to address that with you. I'll stay on here for just a couple of minutes here uh, to see if any questions pop up, but we haven't had any so far. Um, so with that being said, I do want to thank everyone for joining on the call today uh, and, uh, and attending the Dido webinar for Google Voice and, uh, and updates in G Suite. Thanks everyone very much. I'm gonna call it here. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your days. Bye-bye.